Hey everyone, it's Todd, the Cybertruck Truck Guy. Today we're going to be starting the first of a series of videos where we actually do a more detailed comparison between a Cybertruck, a version of the Cybertruck, and one of its competitors. And today we're going to be doing the Cybertruck single motor versus the Dodge Ram 1500. So uh, before I go on, a special announcement. If you're watching this video the day I release it, which is Friday, June 19th, we're doing a special live stream tonight with Jordan Gisagi over at The Limiting Factor at 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. If you don't know who Jordan is, he's probably kind of become the YouTuber best known for doing deep dives on Tesla batteries and battery technology in general. Um, most, many people have watched his stuff. So we're going to be focusing specifically on the Cybertruck and other truck related issues as it relates to battery, battery energy. Talk a little bit about the new hydrogen thing that's popping up. That'll be interesting. So, and also just get a little background from him. So it should be a good live stream tonight. Sorry for the delay on uh, getting the videos out, but uh, hopefully by next week we'll be back on target. So as you can see on the screen here, we're looking at the configurator by RAM for the 1500 series pickup trucks. And I want to go through this. I, I've already pre-done the comparison, but I want to go through this process so I can explain why I'm comparing the Cybertruck single motor to the specific configuration that we're going to be comparing. So the first thing is when you're looking at the specifications, and we see here, this is, uh, if, if you're more familiar with the Ford packaging, this would be similar to the XLT, and this would be simili similar to the Lariat model. And there's a reason I'm always comparing the Cybertruck to the Lariat model, because uh, Ram follows a similar kind of package or model feature set limitations or set upgrades. So I want to show this to you really quickly, because super important to look at these two. This is why I'm going to use the Laramie in today's comparison. So let's go down here and look at, okay, number one, the advanced safety group. You cannot even get it with the Bighorn. It's optional, which we'll be including that with the um, Laramie. Okay, so one thing I also want to so it doesn't have the packages on here in the comparison, but I'll show you that when we get over to the configurator that the package that we are going to get with the Laramie is not even an option on the Bighorn in terms of advanced driver assistance features. So the last thing is notice the four corner air suspension that Sandy Monroe talked about with the Ram. It is only available if you get the four wheel drive package. So we can't even put an air suspension on the RAM that we're going to try and configure. So uh, just want to point that out as we go through the configurator because some of you might be wondering about that. All right. So we're going to go. Oh, and the last thing, <clears throat> the last thing to mention is that the standard interior with the Bighorn is cloth and the standard interior with the Laramie is leather. So again, that's it just ends up being that this tier is the most comparable across the board for cyber trucks when we look at the other trucks okay so let's go ahead and build our laramie so we can see what we're looking at in terms of cost so i'm going to leave the standard engine in there um it's a it's a decent engine and it has their best fuel economy and then so this is Laramie level two equipment group. So notice what we have in here. Automatic high beam dimming. Now, I think Tesla's have that. I don't know for sure if they do. Blind spot and cross path detection. I know the Teslas have that. Um, the park assist and rain sensitive windshield wipers. I don't know if it'll have remote release tailgate, but I assume it will. The nicer nav display so you can see just to get it to match up to the cyber truck i have to get this level two group that's common with all the other trucks okay then their advanced safety group which has adaptive cruise automatic high beam so we know that even though 
full self-driving costs extra. Autopilot is standard, and Autopilot covers all of this stuff that they're going to charge extra for. What you're getting for free is what other automakers charge between, well, to get everything that Tesla's including is almost $5,000. So something to keep in mind. So we're going to add that. I'm just going to leave the paint the way it is. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. Um, I want to point out, I am going to add this, oops, I'm going to add this tonneau cover because it's the only option from the factory. These are crap. I would never buy one of these for any of my trucks because they break down, they don't give you any security, and um, I just, I don't think they're worth it. But it's what they have, so let me make sure I've got everything. And there's one more thing, bed utility. So this gives us tie-down hooks, a little bit of a rail system, and pickup box lighting, and a spray and bed liner. So it still won't be as good as the bed of the Cybertruck, but it's as close as we can it's as close as we can get with their configuration tool so anyway that's it that's our two-wheel drive ram truck that gets us as close as we can to the single motor so let's now take a look at how this looks <clears throat> from a money standpoint okay so Obviously, we have the tri-motor. It's $39.9, one price. And we have, I put all the features over here that I selected to get to the 46.7. I think that matches. Um, now, what I put over here is what I you would actually need to add, I think, to get close to the functionality of the Cybertruck. So the air suspension, if you get it, from Dodge and it's not the it's not a dynamic air suspension it's just a regular it's just an air cushion that's all it is but it gives a very nice comfortable ride um, that would add 1895 it's a thousand eleven hundred dollars to get the power sunroof and you obviously have a whole roof that's a sunroof with the um, tonneau cover with the uh, cyber truck now this retracts power is the tonneau cover that gets most close to the rotating self-deploying tonneau cover that tesla provides this is the actual cost normally it's going to cost you another three or four hundred dollars to get that installed so but we're going with the crap tonneau cover and then if you wanted to put an onboard air compressor you're probably talking another thousand notice i didn't even talk about the power outlets because it just uh, the value of the cyber truck is immense and i'm going to try and keep it approximately close here okay so your total if you just get the options that you can actually get through ram 46 715 if you actually outfitted it that i thought think gets you more compar comparable to the actual cyber truck this is the price you're looking at all right so i'm assuming we're going to drive this 15,000 miles a year for seven years. So this is the most optimistic benefit I can give an ICE vehicle because we all know the maintenance is going to be less. I didn't even factor in things like fees and licenses. So look, assumes no difference in depreciation rate and maintenance costs and doesn't interfact doesn't factor in other ownership's costs like insurance, financing, taxes, and fees. So if you're if your price is $39.9, your taxes are less. In where I live, your licensing is based on the value of the vehicle. So your licensing would be less. You're going to have, we all know, you're going to have lower maintenance costs with the Cybertruck. And we know that there are a lot of Teslas out there running around with 150, 200,000 miles on them and still going strong. So me giving a seven-year rate is I'm giving the ICE vehicle, the absolute best advantages I can to compare it. So if you're just saying they depreciate at the same rate, they're going to be 70% depreciated after seven years. Now, they would normally be probably closer to 
55% depreciation rate if you were driving, like if there was only 70,000 miles on it. But I'm using 15,000 miles per year. So at the end of seven years, that's 105,000. And that's about where an ICE vehicle, ICE truck would be if it had 105,000. It would be around 65 or 70% depreciated. So then here is the fuel cost. So I did all the math over here. Basically, uh, the fuel cost $2.50 per gallon. Now, I know if you're in California or you're somewhere on the coast, your, your fuel is more expensive than it is here in the Midwest. But I'm using Midwest fuel. So we just now are getting back above $2 a gallon. I'm pretty sure we're going to be back up somewhere around $2.50 a gallon relatively soon. So, and then 12 cents per kilowatt hour. We're saying we get about 22 miles per gallon in the truck. And I got that from several sources. And we're getting about uh, three miles per kilowatt hour with the cyber truck. So that ends up on a fuel cost per mile of 11 cents with the Ram and about four cents with the cyber truck. Now I know we're estimating here on the cyber truck. We don't know for sure. We're making some informed guesses based on like the Model X as an example. So um, we can always tweak these once we actually get real EPA data. That's uh, here's your annual cost and then here's your seven year cost. So again, going back out, looking at your total depreciation. So we're just looking at depreciation and fuel, not maintenance, not all the other costs of ownership, just depreciation and fuel. So your seven year cost for the Cybertruck is 32,130. It's 44,632 with this set of specifications and it's 48 a 25 if you add in the things that I actually think would make it more comparable to the cyber truck okay so let's take a look at specs so in terms of bed length the cyber truck the cyber truck is slightly bigger than the Ram and again I know we don't have all the actual dimensions so um, oops that's supposed to be da -da -da -da, that's supposed to be 51 inches so one thing is, keep in mind here, this is one of the things I told you that I hate about pickups is the fact that, yeah, your bed width here is 60 inches wide, but functionally it's really 51 inches because that's where the wheel wells are. And it's just about impossible to use the bed between the wheel wells. I mean, um, all the way from wall to wall without factoring in the wheel wells. So look at the uh, approach angle and departure angle. This is significant. Again, Sandy Monroe just talked about it in his videos, but this, the approach and departure angles of the Cybertruck are much closer to something like a Jeep than they are in, a, in any of the trucks. Um, and this has to do primarily with off-roading. So notice the width, they're almost identical. Height, I don't know. I got this from, I can't remember where. I'm not sure if we know. I think 75 inches is maybe its lowest height. I'll bet it's probably close to 80 inches if you have it all the way up in its highest uh, mode. So it's slightly longer than the Ram. The clearance is obviously significant. And again, this has to do with off-roading. And this is why it's going to be so capable off-road. Now this one, because it's two-wheel drive, you're probably not planning on going off-roading much with this. Big difference here is the range. Obviously, I think this is probably the biggest issue when you're going to get a single motor is the fact that you only are getting to around 250 miles of range versus the about 500 miles of range you're going to get with the Ram. So the towing here, the base rated towing of the Ram is 6730. You can tow up to 115. You have to add some additional features that I didn't add. You have to get a different engine. You have to get a, some different mods with uh, the, like a towing kit. And I think you might have to get a suspension upgrade. So um, payload, the Cybertruck has significantly more payload capacity. From a horsepower standpoint, we don't, again, we don't know, but we believe the horsepower is gonna be somewhere between, I would actually say this is, this probably needs to be more like 350 to 450. Um, so yeah, let's make that. So 350 to 450. 
so torque, it, it's going to be equal to or better than, and it's going to be slightly better than it in 0 to 60. So basically, what you're getting is, you're, you're, you're getting, the main thing is you're getting a trade-off here between, uh, you're, you're paying a lot more for the RAM, basically for range, um, so that you can have more range. Your towing is slightly better, but for most consumers, and I'm thinking that people aren't going to buy this as a work truck for towing, they would at least buy the dual motor. Um, you're, you, in general, you're towing things like a boat or a camper, and you can do that. 7,500 pounds will let you do that, depending on the camper size. Uh, so as, as from a towing standpoint, for small use, like most consumers use it, it'll be fine. But again, then your 250 range, mile range is going to go, and my guess is going to go, you probably got to cut it in half. So now... One of the things I am going to ask Jordan about is this whole idea of dynamic range extension that I really want them to do, which is where you can put a battery in the bed of the Cybertruck and plug it in and actually get extended range. Or you could put a generator in the bed and get extended range without having to stop and, and recharge. So I'm going to be curious if he can shed any light on whether or not that's a possibility. So overall... The, the math really gets shop, shocking if you, if you start thinking about, let's assume the uh, single motor doesn't have the million mile battery and it has a standard battery in it. We know, in fact, um, Nicola Garage, in his last video he did about batteries, showed that you only, you have a very, very small amount of battery degradation, even once you get up to uh, like a thousand cycles uh, or, you know, whatever. It's like, it goes from being a 95%, maybe every year you lose like 3%. So we're talking about, we know that there's, we know that there's Teslas out there that are, that have the same battery they started with that are well over 200,000, well, you know, approaching 300,000 miles. So if this can do that, you're talking about certainly the truck itself, the chassis is going to have a 25 or 30 plus year capacity to function. So when you start talking about at the end of seven years, you have to start this cycle all over again with the ICE vehicle versus you just can, you just start maybe spending a little more maintenance, maybe even do a full battery swap or motor swap. I mean, you're talking 10 grand. You can essentially have a new vehicle. That's the other nice thing I really like about this interior. It looks like it'll be super easy to swap out the interior with a refreshed interior. It's so minimalist. It's so functional that refreshing the interior in seven or 10 years, super easy to do. So the bottom line is that it absolutely on every single category, it's overall functionality, it's overall utility, it absolutely is superior to the vehicle that it's facing, the ICE vehicle that it's facing. And it's less. It's not less after, you know, it's not just less after you factor in fuel costs. It's not less after you factor in rebates. It just is playing out cheaper. We have, we have exceeded cost parity in pickup trucks as soon as the Cybertruck starts being delivered. Um, okay, that's it for today. The next one I'm doing is going to be on the dual motor versus the Ford Raptor. So that one will be coming out next week. Um, again, the best thing you can do to support the channel is to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. I do, I, I think I'm close to announcing the, uh, the gear, the merchandise side. I just have to finish a few little things. So other than that, hopefully we'll see you tonight on the live stream and uh, we'll catch you later.